Okay, hey guys. Brisbane and Brothers, brothers here. <laughs> Aussie. And Dance. Almost this is the video that. that we mentioned in our last uh, 9 inch DF install video. How to check an XD, XE, ZJ, ZK, XF, any of those shapes. We don't really like XFs. Just putting it out there. <laughs> so then. And we're going to just show a few, um, few crucial areas. Dan's will run you through it, guys. I'll just do the camera work today from the right. All right, guys. So basically, you want to start systematically. It's a good tip in life. So you want to go out the front to back, top to bottom, etc. So the first area you want to look at, where I look at over the old cars, is the roof. It's really, you know, it's at eye level. So you want to be checking out the roof. You're not really too concerned on dents. Obviously, they're going to be costly to repair, but you mostly... You're looking for rust guys. Things like this is just like a surface rust from a cheap paint from a stone chip or something. What you really want to be weary of is anything that looks potential that it could be rusting from the inside back out and it's breached. Anything that surfaces. Look down into these channels here. Isn't make sure bad. nothing's going on. So yeah, you check the drip rails out guys. Check the front. Check the pillars. So the first thing I'll do is open the driver's door once I've checked the roof. So you go around the roof. So systematically while you're at this part of the car, open the driver's door. And straight away check. Up at the top corner there. Funnily enough, they do rust in these edges, guys. The so you've got to have a good look. This one's I'll go down the pillar. I'll check around the um, hinges. I'll be looking also, guys, for any cracks. Very important thing with these older cars, particularly even the later models after these, is if you see any hairline cracks anywhere around the hinges or the frame of the car, that's trouble, guys. Big trouble. And that'll end up being like a bit of a, um, you know, a bit of a floppy chassis, to, so to speak. So back in just here, we'll have a look at the you're door open. Systematically, guys, all the way through. So you're looking for so any... A pillar first, guys. All the way around. B pillar. Another thing you can do, guys, if you're really lucky, is you can actually pop in there, guys. And you can remove the kick panel and have a bit of a look there. If you're lucky also, you can potentially pull up the carpet and check onto the floor panel there. Through this hole here, he means into the inside to see what's going on from the plenum. Generally, you get an indication when you're looking at the car off the carpet if it looks like it's been too wet or not. If the carpet looks like it's been wet and dried quite a bit, then you'd be wanting to look underneath, obviously. This carpet's this car, remarkable. Yeah, guys, this right. car's actually remarkable. Picked an example to show you guys. Okay, the next one is you've got to get down really low. So you've got to get down right underneath the door, guys. And you'll keep back up. You want to check the full length of the door. The corner, you want to check the folds all the way through and the actual bottom part of the door, the top here. Wow, it's a mean to brew. Amazing. You want to go right around the rail. That's it. So you can see this is like a perfect, this is like a rust. There's a bit of outer blemishes, but it's a rust free door, driver's door. So there you go. So pretty much that's how you check out all the doors, eh? Front to you back. Through, you, What's you, next? You go through and do the rear, come through the car. Guys, also while well, you wouldn't skip past, so you do the seals. Generally, it's the rear of the seal on these cars, but it can be the front too. So you go over the whole seal, guys. While the doors are open, you check in the inner, and then you're going underneath, you check in the lip. These ones mean to you check that this hasn't been flattened on a chassis rail, otherwise that can crack the inside. If you're looking from the back or the room. front, you get your, your eye side level with the panel, and you get down close, guys, and you always capture the sheen if you get, if you are to look for any um, repairs or imperfections. This looks like it's all dead original. I mean, and while you're here, guys, you check the dog leg. So you look around the back here, you check the dog leg on the inner, check the full dog leg, they rust out the quite, quite common area. You check the rear, and then, guys, the rear guards. While you're down low, too, the rear guards, very common area. I've got an almost pristine example, and there's just a little bit in the rear guard, guys. There's nothing. You've got to get right under, check the inside, the outside, the rear guards, and both sides. So you check the seals, rear guards. While you run to the guys, you pop your head under and you just look under the chassis lines of the car if there's any damages, if the chassis has been hit anywhere from the front and the back. You want to check the front. So you next you come down to the front here, you guys. Obviously looking around the inner of the guards, around the guards here. Look for any wrinkles. <coughs> look for any wrinkles on the flat areas. Come to the front here, guys. I look under the front and look for any hits or knocks in any of the suspension arms. Make sure the car's looking all straight, the cross member, everything. And you can also see the seals from the front here, get down as low as you can. And that's basically it. So that's a full lower inspection. Then moving up through the car, so you've done the seals, you check the doors out. Obviously, you could get the bonnet open. It's not hard to check out guards, you know, if you look at the guard. 
down here it's it's mint you can peek in here you can peek in through the door all right guys this is a lot of telltale under here guys the engine bay and the bonnet straight away you're checking the bonnet lip right underneath the bonnet lip there guys you're looking the whole way across it's absolutely guys it's a mint oh <laughs> yo I'm gonna take my sunnies off hey this is an amazing car every time i check out it's like too good to be true well, you know it's one of the ford lovers things you know you're always looking for that body with like no rust because they don't exist the fords are basically like maybe frost a bit of an issue too guys i probably use always a little bit of something going on on the um the sealer they use on the skin there is, there's something going on here, it's not serious, so that'll have to be treated, it's a bit surfacey. Actually, that's just the glue. The worst rust we found in the car there's when we were looking at it for sale was right here. So, is it right even rust? Oh no, it's just glue. It's just glue. Oh, guys, what? It's just glue? It's absolutely... Okay, now the next so most important okay. thing, guys, is you look down the rail, you just eyeball that it's straight, that it hasn't been in a front ender, you look at your guard spacing to the rail and these bolts if they've been messed with if people have undone them you want to have a bit of a peek they all look pretty good another thing you want to look at is how straight this radiator support panel is when people put engines in and out they can bend or twist these so you check these corners also this all looks original spot right welded down, guys checking down underneath where the um they can rust out around the radiator brackets and around the front torque boxes checking all that so you checked already from the bottom now you're checking from the top and then you can always check off in your mind under the battery train this is area systematically is being checked now it's all quite good now guys this is the one dan was waiting to uh we didn't want to rain, rain ruin anyone's surprise it's got one of these at home that may not have had a good look at their own car that they own but get a torch shine down in here and have a good look in here and have a look how the inside of the plenum is doing they have a problem of filling up with mud and leaves over the years and starting to rust out. Now Very this one, common, we've guys. looked in guys, this is absolutely mint. We have to pull the dash out of this car because the wiring's just absolutely a nightmare. So guys, they're planning so and they're checking their, rear, checking their rear lip there guys. Very important too when that joint the that can be lip, yeah. the firewall lip. That can be really annoying to fix, but this is absolutely mint. Firewall, obviously for any dents or hits, you can eyeball the chassis rails you guys when the engine's out, you can really check it out. So you can really see you guys everything. So you can see the whole rail symmetry. goes along here. And you just check that it's flat and square, that all the welds look good, that it's nice. See there's but probably been a little bit of rust maybe leaking off of that master, so we're gonna take care of that light surface rust there. When you're the really looking box. just to find some trouble, guys, because you really, you know, this, the car's perfect, guess where you go? Under the washer bottom. So even the most perfectest of cars, guys, doesn't matter how good they are. Generally, you saw a good mate of ours, a bit, or the washer bottom. The good mate of ours, Stuart Vigilante, commented he's never seen them rust here, but it's a funny story that my yellow one there has rust under here and the blue XC there. And these cars obviously had rust there, Dan, oh, what have you brought it? Someone's put a bit of a patch in there they've got out of a car that was good. It's not the neatest job, but hey, it's in the there. The problem is no one removes the washer bottles. Really. We saw it before we they brought it. To maintain and clean the car fully. They just stay there in place and a little bit of dirt gets behind them. Coney big hours. bore shocks all around. Alright guys, so you've done We're the... We're just uh, having a nice look under here now. You obviously do both sides when you're doing the seals, the doors, etc. Another thing you can look at is bumper bar bolts and brackets. If they're bent or if the nuts have been moved, adjusted. See, the funny thing about these cars, if we shut this bonnet, the bonnet alignment's actually pretty shocking, but it, as far as we can tell, it looks original. You can't tick all the boxes, guys, so you know you're, you're looking for... Obviously, rust is the biggest issue. You're looking for rust mainly, then panel alignment, dents and all that. Dents can be expensive to fix, panel alignment can be tricky, but the rust, guys, can be a killer. Like, you can actually lose a car. You can have a car one minute that you're, like, investing into building. You've sunk, like, 25, 30 grand into it. Then, all of a sudden, the rust reveals itself. And it's nothing, guys. A the lot of my mates come unstuck, seeing me having a couple of old cars. And they go and buy a it's car and they don't look at it. Pops out. Yeah, you before know, so you, you know, know it. You don't want to go investing, like, too much emotion <laughs> in a into dead body. That potentially could end up being a rust bucket. You want to really do the checks. So, guys, what I've shown you here is we've checked the roof, the doors, we've checked the front. 
Obviously, you're doing both sides. The seals so the go. Seals go. So we'll start from the front this time. Very common guys in the front guard see they can rust out lower. This is absolutely means there's a bit of a dent there, but oh yeah, I don't I complain. You there's know no what rust. I like about a dent? Well, but it can't be bog because it's steel. You can, if you get in from the other side, guys, and you're looking back here on this panel. I tried to do it before. I don't really have a steady enough hand, but if you know what we're saying, the inner seal. Check it out. As close as you get to the car, guys, you can side. You get your eye, eye alignment up nice and close with the panel, and you look down, and it's, it's basically mean. Come through all the doors, guys. We're not going to look because we know they're mean. Down here on this join, in here, in around the back here, they can go. This is a really bad area on XFs. Part of the reason I don't like them, I'm not sure what happened with the way that they welded them, but they go right here. All around the back, both sides. Right the top, under the rubber, all the way along. Both pillars outside. You know, actually, I'll show you one inner rear. We'll just quickly. I don't think I actually showed you this section. And a lot of forts. So you're checking all the way around, guys, all the folds here. Anything into these, you know, triple layers of steel where it's folded up, it's a bit tricky. It can be a little bit um It's sensitive. not really something you can do at home, you've got to get a proper shop to do it so it can be like signed off because it's really structural. Want to check these structural areas out, guys, it's mint. Yeah. I've seen cars, the whole car's that's the grill. The door, and then boom, there's like a the big... grill was broken on the corner here and dancers glued it back on, so we've got a really nice mint grill here ready to go back in the car on the front. We're just gonna do a bit more work before we chuck that on. We've saw some original black Fairmont style steel window winders here on the floor because the car didn't have them. Something unusual about these cars is lights in the back. We noticed when we brought them, they're from New Zealand and a few of our mates reckon they might be police lights or something. Roof lining guys, if the roof is rusty or the car's been underwater or something you can generally tell from the roof lining you'll see like mould or there'll be telltale signs this roof lining is absolutely superb. Courtesy lights in the pillars, that's a Fairmont option. And switches in the rear doors, that's so another Fairmont through, thing. You can check off, you've basically gone top to bottom, front, and now working to back. So let me know the roof, the whole front of this car, the seals and everything so far is rust free guys. Now all we've got left to check is just the boot. So you can go through now. Pop the boot. There's a little bit of. We've got a few goodies in here. The parts for this hey, field. thanks, Les, for the number plate light, mate. Awesome. And okay. th thanks to my mate Alex for the new boot molds. We're going to do a video on fitting that. This one's torn on that side. Can't wait to check that on. All right, guys. So you're looking at the outside of the boot skin. Is it the light? As you're picking it up, you can get certain light reflections just to check it out. Yeah, very nice. And then you look under the inside straight away, check it out. Under the bottom edge here goes. The lighting's a bit bad. When you look in the boot of an old Ford, you get an idea of how beautiful the paint was back in the day. That's absolutely, that's Hermitage that's Red. That's Hermitage Red, guys. Beautiful look So it gives it. you an idea of the colour. It's a bit of a moment for me to sure, Jack sticker. Day. You know what's weird about the Jack sticker? That is not an Australian Ford on there. It's like a like a Chrysler or something. Yeah, it's no, really it's weird. weird. Yeah, always armed with a young fella. So We've actually got all of our goodies in the boot here for the build, but what you want to have a look at, guys, is you want to get in under the back window and you want to look in under this channel. It's mint. You've got to get the your reason this car right is mint is because if someone's actually put in two uh, rust uh, electro electronic rust prevention systems, like two right there under that yeah, rear window parcel shelf. Needed. So we're gonna we're gonna pull those out now because they've done their job. They've preserved the car perfect for us. We've got our thumper exhaust here, some caps. It's a bit of a trick, guys, when you're actually checking the back window. You've got to get don't be lazy. You've got to get right in, suspend yourself. Your head's got to be looking back up on the other side of this tray here. Yeah. Right through, and there's these joins on this side too. The worst spot where these go is in these folds of steel. So you've got to look right on both sides. It yeah. takes a little while, guys. It's, not See, it's, it's dry, it's mint to this car. Like the reason we brought it, guys, look at it. Absolutely. When they start to go in there, it's very expensive unless you can do it yourself. Let's have a look on this side. I've actually never seen anything like this one. So mint. There's folds in the corner, which is perfect. It's a bit hard to see there, but... Right. What you've got to do next, guys, is get everything out. These have a plastic fuel tank, so you're lucky you've only really got to check in the sides of these. 
checking the very back bottom. This one's got the original jack in the foam cylinder back there too, guys. So just a few little things we love. We've restored the battery tray, we've restored the exhaust, we've restored a fan, the starter motor, we've done some V8 base plates, we've got some chrome trims. These were quite expensive. Every bloody one that we brought was the wrong one for the car, but we found one here in amongst this pile that's gonna that's gonna sort us out on this corner here. And we've got one mint eyebrow mold. So it's actually one, one last area you guys see look you're all in the bottom. You come to the back here, you look in the back guys. This weather seal channel in on the lower particularly but the whole way around you actually have to remove the rubber guys. So you don't really want to go jerking someone's car around when you're looking at it, but you actually have to pop the rubber out. You it's really pretty have easy to, to put back in, but you want to check in, in pop this channel. Check the whole way around. You'd be surprised. I've seen cars, the whole car was immaculate. But, and then just in there, shot. crazy, like absolutely. They make straight sections. Like There's rust replacements, but they don't make none of these curves. So you'll yeah, have to go and try and find it. it from another car. But it's a problem that all the cars have. So to try and find certain areas as rust repairs, it's kind of Guys. impossible. We, you know you want to buy smart, don't just buy any rusty piece of crap because you're watching the videos and enjoying the build. By the time you get to this stage, you guys, you realise, alright, it's rust free. Alrighty, so what you. we're actually doing today, something a bit different. We've got the engine out of the ZH Fairlane, we've given it a real nice clean up detail. And something, look, it really pissed me off at the time, but it's not a bad thing, and I'm glad I've spotted it. The timing cover has a tiny little, like the gasket wasn't fitted properly, and you can see that there's these tra trails in the gasket that's just sticking out there, and there's water yep, just weeping. Yep, I can see it, bro. There, 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 on that corner. So, that was a bit of a pity. Ah, uh, that's so annoying, man, guess what? So what we're gonna have to do is pull the hammer, pull the timing cover, drop the oil, drop the pan, and, Time well, look, for... we went a bit more beyond. After talking to our mate Scotty at PW the other day, we didn't realise there's actually a shortage of lifters and push rods worldwide because of COVID. So, the camshaft that we would normally run in a build like this was not available, but we so looked around. Camshaft, so what, yeah, what, we're going to be there having to like remove this. Yes, yes, we're going to be there, right here. We're going to be right there. We saw that. some nice power by Ford for this beast. And we did really want to run the iron intake and this and we're going to do like some upgrades later on the dyno tuning. But we just so happened to come across this killer intake the other day for a price we could not refuse. It's actually a holy single plate. This is a real we nice got a new water guys. pump. Check this out. Old school. Holy God. It's actually a spread board, guys, but it's had a bit of porting it's a little bit of work done. It's, quite it's nice. actually it's not too big on the port, it's standard, which is yeah, very standard good. Two you never sizing. want to get anything that's being touched around here. You always want to get standard ports. It's got the block off. So I was looking around, looking around, and normally I can get cam shafts quite cheap on my account because I built a few engines you may not know, which we'll talk more and about I in love a moment. So I was looking around and I came across this. Oh, now, this is a Crane Blue Racer cam. Now, this is the biggest cam that you can fit in a Cleveland before you have to fit diff gears and before you have to fit like a high stool converter. So, the specs are roughly 520 lift and 485 lift. It's in the 225s at 50. It's a Crane Blue Racer. I haven't got the numbers here on hand, but this is a camshaft in this engine here, which we've compression tested and it made 160 PSI even, and it has been recently rebuilt. I have a good feeling that we'll be just touching the 400 horsepower. Later on, if we get in excited, we can maybe swap to a set of my 4V heads or some closed chamber or get a set of alloy heads and try and pick up a bit more power, but these are so good for now. Look at all talking, bro. What, what, what we're gonna do if you want to jump on to my channel and check it out the clevo king i'm gonna show how we actually fit all of this gear into the engine it's gonna be too long a video and it's quite technical for us to put in the brisbane brothers video but anyone that's really genuinely interested will obviously be on that channel guys because who wouldn't be following the clevo king if you're into clevos you know what i mean so we're gonna show the full details of that on there because on this channel we're just going to show the results cut to it chuck it in we're going to show the build it's, guys it's going to be a real me and my brother are going hard on the brisbane brothers channel because we're in it together and it's a lot of fun something for us to both do together it keeps us busy 
the Clevo King channel is kind of my to business. Cover all the aspects of this, it could be a really lengthy video. Too, yeah. Too much to get into one. Yeah. Like half an hour in itself. We actually, we actually here. brought the cam and the lifters and We've the springs brand new, and the guy was so cool. This. We gave him some stickers and told him about the channel, and he chucked us a brand new timing chain. So I did kind of want to do in my video how to dial in the cam with a degree wheel, but because this is pretty much a set and forget, we'll just line it up dot to dot. Let's have a bit of a look at this cam. Beautiful Guys, hydraulic like, you know flat what? tapper. Where's one of the beakier slopes? Stock. There we go, so look at that. It's not too wild, but oh, she's it's good. Gonna make, um, so we're gonna do the Probably be a bit more than 400 horsepower, guys. I like to conservatively estimate. So 400 horsepower at the engine at the flywheel we're talking about. Let's not get carried away. It's just a it's pretty old, stock it's 351. It's an old you know, steel motor. Guys, we've got heaps of little tricks with this coming to you that I just realized we've got all those little tricks. We've got heaps action, of little tricks, yeah. Guys, you're going to want to watch that video. The cam installed. Definitely. We've done quite a few. It might end up even being a few videos. The run in, that'll be on our channel. That'll be on our channel because I've already covered that on my channel, but this will be a bit more interesting. To cover, there's there's a quite a the just the lash, is a video, guys, in itself, just doing the lash. Yeah, it is. This is a standard hydraulic cam, so there's not you don't have to really do it like you're setting it up a solid engine, but we might. Well, we're saying lash, but what he means is preload. I was doing it, you know, like the the hard way. We, you know, we might do it the hard way. I will just put a little tip in this video quickly before we sign out, guys, because it's getting afternoon and we've got to rip in. When you're buying lifters, if they are hydraulic, have a quick look at them by hand before you fill them up with oil that the lifter actually operates and that the plunger goes up and down. A lot of new lifters out of the box have an issue because they've sat around and they'll corrode and they'll like put, sort of weld themselves shut and they'll become like a solid. If you don't notice it in your engine assembly, you'll wipe a lobe. That's people. A lot of people talk about zinc and oiling issues and incorrect fitment and mismatching components. No, the number one reason is people don't look at the lifters when they get them brand new out of the box. And well, you won't get anywhere with a lifter that's not working. We checked all this gear out, guys. It's got my tick of approval. Brief adjustable rockers and that, guys. You would feel that setting it up the, up the preload, and you'd kind of pick up on it. Otherwise, if you don't, if you miss it. And the valve actually hangs when you're setting it up, guys, you'll have big trouble. So I would that estimate really that cool this area. engine would have been in the vicinity of about 260 to 280 horsepower as a recondition, high compression, 351, 30 over with good pistons. We saw all the paperwork when we brought it. The guy spent seven and a half grand, 7,700 or something it's not cheap, on it. guys, it was built for like reliability, you know. It's a shame that we're going to have to pull this cover off now, but because we're opening it up, we're going to do some upgrades. So make sure you smash that like and subscribe, guys. Thanks for this watching. This is actually really cool, bro. You know what this is? This is going to be like the limit, guys. This is the limit, right? Of like before you've got to go big bucks. So it's going to be the limit of stock gear, stock stall, and before you've really got to go crazy with engine stuff like roller rocket conversions. This will be really These interesting. These are to see four Ventura heads, not four V, but they're they're. Four barrel late model big port heads. We'll do a video, guys. We'll line this up beside a full build with alloy heads, all the crazy. Coming out of a 78Z H, technically it's a black block, so it's got all we'll the good shit in it. If this budget builds combo, and you'll be surprised with the results, guys. I hope you stay tuned and get behind it. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Yeah.